Hello, welcome. Before we really get into the mathematics of this video, let me just tell you what the goal is. The goal is to make sure you have a really quick and intuitive way of graphing your sine function, here's the sine, and a really quick way of graphing the cosine function. And the reason for this is that you often analyze these functions, and if you have an intuitive way of dealing with them and drawing them yourself, you can answer all types of problems. So before we do that, why don't you pause the video and recreate this graph that you see right here. I just wanna identify that the x-axis right here, these marks are at quarter pies. So we have one fourth pi, two fourths, three fourths, four fourths, five, six, seven, and eight fourths pi. You'll notice that they've also marked radian measures oops, of pi over six right here and pi over three. That's tying to the unit circle. And they've tried to also indicate these angle measures here that correspond to these radian measures there as well. They're there to help you. And finally, this negative one indicates the lowest value of the cosine function. And if it's not clear, I'll say it, these highlight points here, here, here are positive and negative one. All right, so maybe take a moment, sketch this out, and then press play, and we'll talk about it together. Okay, so you've got this thing sketched out. Maybe it took you a while, maybe it's your first time doing it, maybe it seemed a little overwhelming. I'm, I wanna convince you that you can do this very, very quickly. Um, all you have to have right now is a sense of the shape of these things. So right now you wanna have a sense that, okay, the sine function starts at zero because at zero degrees, the height of our unit circle is zero. You can think about it that way. And then one cycle ends at zero, starts at zero, ends at zero, and it looks like this, goes up, down, and then back up at its smooth shape. That's where you should be at for sine. It starts at zero, it rises up to one, comes back down, and then curves back up. It's got one cycle. The cosine function looks different. And in some ways, I guess it is, of course. The cosine does not start at zero, it starts at one. It dips down to negative one, and then ends at one. So, in, in our minds, we have this image now of what these two things look like. For me, the cosine looks like a valley, and the sine looks like a hill and then a valley, hill and valley. What's remarkable, and we'll talk more about this, is that these are the same functions that are slightly out of phase with each other. The basic idea is that if you extended the cosine, say like that, and you extend the sine, you would really start to see that, oops, that they are, the same in shape. And I'm not doing a good job, I realize. Look at this, fix this. There's our sine function extended. Here's our cosine function extended there. And I don't know if you can see it, but they're slightly out of phase. If I took my cosine function here and I shifted it to the right by pi over two or 90 degrees, I took this point and put it here. I took this point and put it here. I took this point and put it here. I took this point and put it here, you would have the sine function, right? You can see that in those landmark points there, if you shifted them over pi over two radians, right? Or 90 degrees, they would land at these points on the sine function, right? Over, 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 over. And that's true for every point. That's because they're 90 degrees or pi over two radians um, out of phase with each other. You can translate one over and it'll fit perfectly with the other. The sine can be translated back 90 degrees, and the cosine can be translated up, and they fit exactly. So that's a remarkable feature. So it's essentially one shape shifted over. But it is helpful to also think of the cosine as having this valley shape, and the sine as having this hill and then valley shape. Now, how can we sketch this super quickly? Well, you've heard me mention it a little bit already in the above discussion, but the unit circle helps us think about these waves because the sine function, all I'm thinking about are the heights of these points in the unit circle, and that's the graph that you're seeing up, uh, that we just saw above, right? We're mapping out those landmark values, whereas the cosine is the x values at the corresponding angle measures. So really, the unit circle kind of unlocks those key points in a parent function for sine or cosine. And when I say parent function, I just mean a basic sine or cosine function, from which we can think about others. Let me show you what I mean, and then we'll get to the speed part. So for the sine function, at zero degrees, our x-axis right here, this is our degree measure, 
x is our degree measure, whereas y is the value of the sine or cosine at that corresponding degree. So at zero degrees in the unit circle, you can see that sine at zero degrees is zero, and there it is in the graph. Then we can jump ahead to any of our landmarks at pi over six, right? Radians, the sine is one half, and you can see that pi over six, it's um, one half right here, right? And then at pi over four, it's radical two over two. You can see that height right there. And notice the cosine and sine intersect there because the cosine and sine are equal at pi over four. And then it climbs at pi over three, it's at radical three over two, right? And then it goes up to radical four over two or one, essentially at pi over two, the sine is one. And then it, we keep tracing our values and, and here it'll climb back down, boop, 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 boop. You can see those answers here, right? Those values there. And then it goes here. You see those values, and then it climbs back up, right? And the zero matches here again. So the sine function is demonstrated there in the unit circle, and the cosine is in the same way. It starts at a height of one, and then it starts to climb down, tracking these values here, and then it continues here to go down, 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 right? and then it climbs back up. The x values are going up in this direction, so it starts to climb up here, right? So we're, we're just tracking x values now. And then it continues to go up until it reaches one again. So the cosine and sine are tracked in the unit circle, and you can visualize it that way. It's not necessarily gonna speed things up for you, but it might give you some context to, uh, to intuitively think about these functions. And now we should be thinking, okay, when are they equal? Right here and here, that's a good check. You can see that they're equal at pi over four and five pi over four, which correspond to here and here. And that makes sense. They're on the same tangent line right there. The sine and cosine are equal. Okay, so they have the same tangent at those values as well. So we have these set up. We've got a basic sense. How can you graph these quickly? I think the key here is to look at the symmetry of the functions. And let me show you what I mean. Okay, so I promised to give you a really quick way to sketch this. So the first thing I would do, uh, and this is gonna be slow because I'm gonna explain it, but once you get the hang of it, it's extremely quick to do this, right? To get a sketch. So here, I'm gonna sketch out the y-axis and the x-axis and for me, there's a, a beautiful symmetry in these, in these curves. To really demonstrate that, what I suggest you do at the beginning is to utilize halfway points. So an, you wanna pick a number of increments on your x-axis that can be halved nicely. In other words, pick powers of two, right? So I'll pick 16. I'll go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. At eight has their halfway point, that'll be pi radians. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, that's our full rotation, 2 pi. So I picked eight, uh, 16, which is 2 to the 4th, uh, increments on our x-axis, and that'll enable me to half it up to 4 times to get a really nice picture for sine and cosine. And the halfway points, I keep halving, right? Between 0 and pi is pi over 2, between pi and 2 pi is 3 pi over 2. And then you can do more halfway points. Between 0 and pi over 2 is pi over 4, right? And now we go by fourths, this is pi over four. This is, every two is pi over four. This is two pi over four, three pi over four. This is four pi over four, five pi over four, and so on, six pi over four, seven pi over four. So now by choosing 16 increments and using halves, I quickly have a picture of those landmark radian measures. Then I know it's gonna fluctuate between one and negative one, put that down here. And oh my gosh, that should be equal. We can, we can do better than this. If I want up four here to go to one, do down one, two, three, four. Okay. Now our sine function, let's use red because we've been using red. Sine, again, is just tracking these y values. In other words, I know it has to look from my rough sketch something like this. And I know it starts at zero and it ends at zero in one rotation. I know that the highest y value is at pi over two. Right, so that's gonna be, here's my pi over two here. 
and my lowest value is here at 3 pi over 2, here. So 3 pi over 2 and negative 1. And then I know it reaches 0 at pi radians over here, right? So I'm using 0, sine is at 0. Pi over 2 is at 1, 3 pi over 2 is at negative 1, and then pi is at 0. And I could, you know, this is really enough to get some landmark points to work with that I can transform, but it might be nice to get a better picture by looking at a couple of more points. The halfway points, uh, the halfway angle measurements between 0 and pi over 2. So at pi over 4, what should we expect to happen? At pi over 4, it's at uh, sine at radical 2 over 2. Okay, so that radical 2 over 2 is the square root of 2 divided by 2. It's about 0. 0.7. That's a number we should kind of have a reference point for. So here I've divided them into, into fourths, right? 0. 0.25, 0. 0.5, 0. 0.75. So 0. 0.7 is going to be, let's say, about here. Now, what the sine function is going to do is going to come up, the peak, and then it's going to have a mirror reflection here on the other side. On the other side, it's going to reflect so that at 3 pi over 4, we're at the same height, right? So these are two points are at the same height from each other. Uh, they, they have the same height, I should say. Comes back down. And that's going to do it again at 5 pi over 4. Uh, it's just the opposite now. It's at negative radical 2 over 2, or negative 0.7. So about here. And then it has the same height there. It has a symmetry. And that's our sine function. Now the cosine function... Again, it's just tracking the x value, so it starts at a 1, and it ends at a 1. And I know that the sine function reaches its lowest value here at pi radians. And I know that the cosine, that's uh, something like this, right? It's this valley shape right here. And I know it actually has to cross the sine function here and here. That's where cosine and sine are equal. I also know that once cosine is 0, it's 0 at pi over 2 radians here. And it's also 0 at 3 pi over 2 radians here. And so now I know the cosine function is something like this. Now this, even, I'm, I'm going to leave it. You know, it looks badly drawn. I'm going to leave it because it's a sketch. And the idea is that you now, right, as you practice this, you'll have a really quick way of quickly generating the sine and cosine function. You get your an, uh, an even number of increments that can be split into halves nicely, so powers of two, and then those give you landmarks to sketch. And these points, then if you have to transform them, you can look at these points to do that. All right, I hope this helped.